हेलो 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 हाय गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू न्यू वीडियो की हाल चाल आई होप यू आर डूइंग गुड इन दिस वी गोइंग सी प्रॉब्लम मिनिमम एरे सम अगेन नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम्स आर आल्सो कमिंग इन सो टू सब्सक्राइब क्लिक द बेल आइकन नाउ इट सिंपली सेज दैट यू आर गिवन एन एरे नम्स एंड थ्री इंटीजर्स के ऑपरेशन 1 ऑपरेशन 2 एरे नम्स के ऑपरेशन 1 ऑपरेशन 2 नाउ एज अ टास्क यू हैव टू परफॉर्म द फॉलोइंग ऑपरेशन ऑन नम्स व्हाट ऑपरेशन 1 सेज This operation one is actually the number of operation ones which you can do, but it simply say operation one is choose any index i, divide that by two, round up, don't down, round up to the nearest whole number. You can perform this operation at most operation one times, and not more than once per index. Simply says that if operation one is let's say x. I can apply this divide by two operation x times, but also making sure that one index can be touched or can be applied with only one operation one, which means if I had two operation twos, so I can choose two indexes and can divide them by two, but I cannot apply two operations on same index. right same way for operation 2 the operation is choosing an index but rather than dividing what we did for the step 1 subtract k from nums of i but again subtract this only when my nums of i is greater than or equal to k if it is less you cannot subtract and again the same concept i can perform this operation at most operation 2 number of times and also not more than once per index now this this note that both operation one can be applied both operations can be applied to the same index but at most one each which means that if operation 2 would have been 2 operation 1 would have been 3 on this end which operation 2 is 3 which means i can apply operation 2 thrice on three different indexes at max let's say i choose 1 2 3 if i have operation 2 i can still choose the same index to apply operation 2 also but still operation 2 will be on different indexes so two times i should apply let's say i apply at 2 and at at 8 like this which means at index 0 at next one which means this line ultimately return the minimum possible sum which means try to get your values down as much as possible to get your minimum possible sum now when we look at this specific example firstly we will realize that they have divided by your 19 by 2 so it became a 10 and they then subtracted k to the next higher value which again you can subtract 3 from any one you can subtract from here from here from here from here any one you can subtract again you cannot subtract your 3 from 2 because it is less subtract anywhere you will get the highest value so what you could infer from this example is that maybe they are trying to go towards a greedy approach what do you mean by greedy approach greedy approach simply says that i again i'm not saying it is correct but i'm trying to think because this see feels the most intuitive so i will sort it on the basis again simple ascending order or descending order so it is 2 3 3 8 19 now i have two operations first is divide by 2 second is subtract by k obviously it makes a sense that because of higher value divide by 2 will give a higher output which means if i do a divide by 2 in this 19 it will give me a 10 which is 19 plus 1 by 2 which is 19 plus 1 by 2 again plus 1 to do a seal because i have to do a round up If I would have do, if I would have done a divide by two, it would have given me a four. It would have given me a two, a two, a one. So this is the outcome. This is the outcome. But for me, I have to tell the impact. Highest impact is actually here. It is an impact of nine. It is an impact of four. Impact of one. Impact of one. Impact of one. Highest impact is technically seems like. for higher value i should try to do a divide by 2 for lower values i will do a subtraction by k this seems like a fact and again it is actually working also and many people must be thinking the same way but the moment you look at this example you will realize oh that's not true which means if i do apply the same greedy approach i will sort it 
and I will realize, okay, I have to perform operation one twice. I will obviously try to reduce this by two. Next time I will try to reduce this, it will also become two. Next, operation one I have to perform. Okay, apply operation, operation two I have to perform. But that is only once. But on which value I should apply? Any value, all are twos. But <laughs> now the case three. To apply operation two, your k value should have been higher than equal to three. So it would have made sense. You apply operation one here, operation two here, then operation one here, which means that which where how you're applying operation two, operation one is dependent upon what value you are actually handling at that moment, which is uh, actually a very big deal. Now, um, the other thing is, okay, how will you solve this then? Now you might feel like, Aryan, what I will do is I will try to go towards na essay ki I, I will try to monitor the moment I have, the moment I'm encountering a value, the moment I'm encountering a value such that, such that next time, okay, I'll quickly go. Thank you, sir. Oh, I did not cut this, but uh, what will happen here is that you might start thinking, Aryan, what I should do here is that as I go on backwards, I will try to estimate or check that am I getting values which might become less than equal to k, so I should start applying operation right now. This, again, I'm just trying to find the loopholes in the greedy and try to go around more greedy approach and trying to figure out, okay, maybe it will work. But again, this will not work. Why, Aryan, why? Because you never know how many operation two you have right now and how many of them could be applicable to the current problem. Which means that operation two right now, let's say it asks for a value of three. Maybe I have many threes. Maybe they're not, maybe there's a higher value also. So you would never know in how many of them you will apply operation one and how many of them you will have to apply operation two. And maybe I could apply operation two in them. Maybe like in these, let's say, if these are still higher, let's say these are still higher. Um, let's say these are still higher, six, six, eight, and then let's say four, then three. So how, how considering right now they are one, but considering I have a very list, long list, then if I'm interested from the end, I will never be able to know that in what all I should apply operation one and then oh, what operation two, then operation one, then operation two again. So that is the biggest issue here. Can, what, what, what can we do? Simply, in these cases, when you are not sure of greedy would work or not, simply try to go towards the recursive approach. Try out everything. Which means, again, what I, what I, what I mean by try out everything? Try out everything. If you if you have two, two, four, three, at this index, try out. What if if you only do operation one here? What if you only do operation two here? What if you do operation one and operation two, both of them? But here there will be again two options. What if you do operation one first and then operation two? What if you do operation two first and then operation one? Doesn't it seem like at at index I have two options either do operation one or operation two, right? So it is kind of I will try to build a simple recursive case in which the index is here. I know I have to do operation one number of times, operation two number of times. This is the remaining of operation which are remaining for me right now. At this index, I will have a quick check. If operation one is more than zero, which means I can apply operation one, simply apply operation one. What is the application here? Application will be nothing but that how much I'm able to like reduce it and ultimately getting the corresponding answer. So with the new current value, because this is a operation of divide. So at nums of i, or let's say the, the value, which is uh, this nums of i. So I'll simply say that nums of i plus one by two will be the new value. And then, which means nums of i plus one by two will be the new value. And then simply go and solve next index with your reduced operation because you have used operation one. And then go. Same way, uh, simply try that of operation two is more than zero, but also make sure that your nums of i 
it should be nums of i should be more than equal to your k in that case apply operation 2 what is operation 2 operation 2 simply says again this is another if condition separate if condition it, it will say that the new sum should become my nums of i minus k plus go and solve for i plus 1 operation 1 remain as is operation 2 will become minus 1 what if i would apply both of them operation 1 and again operation 1 is more than 0 and operation 2 is also more than 0 which means i can apply both of them in this there will be two cases firstly i apply operation 1 then i apply operation 2 or i will apply operation 2 then i will apply operation 1 and that's it that's it and you're trying for all the possibilities what is the complexity for this obviously if you use recursion that will go to exponential but considering this is what you actually require i is the index operation 1 operation 2 if you look at the constraints that could have given us a very big hint that greedy would not be applicable because i is nothing but 100 operation 1 operation 2 also 100 so this ultimately will be 1 e6 as the complexity thus the constraint itself are speaking so loudly that greedy will not work you have to apply recursion and then maybe you know memoize it and get it done by db again the constraints are speaking very loudly so for me i would have looked at the constraints first and that would have instantly given me an idea of oh what's, what's going to be applied but still for you guys in an interview constraints will not be told you have to bring up your approach from scratch without the constraints being known to you Cool, let's say the code is exactly same. Again, uh, I have the corresponding C++ code also. Again, I can explain both of them if you want, but let's say, okay, I explain the corresponding Java code. So for sure, I will have a DP where I will have N operation plus one, operation plus two initialized. I will initialize this with the value of minus one. Then I start off from the index zero. K is constant. Operation one, operation two are the other arguments which I want to have in my solve function. Base case, simple base case, if you have reached the very end, no worries, nothing you have to do. Ultimately, simply return a zero. Why is zero you returned? Because ultimately you are actually adding what? You are re returning what? You are returning the sum. You are re returning the sum. And obviously you want minimum sum. So if you have reached end, there is nothing you should do. Simply add a zero in your sum. So as to not impact your sum. Your simple memoization case, if the thing, if the state is not equal to minus one, which means it is already computed. Then I will simply do the first thing. What if I don't even operate on specific index? So the first case is, what if I, what if I don't even operate? Which means I add nums of i as is, go on to next index and operation operation to remain as is. Now, the first case, if operation one is more than zero, I apply operation one on index i, which means my sum should become nums of i plus 1 by 2 getting the seal value solve for next index with the reduce operation 1 what if i apply operation 2 only only in that case my sum should be added with nums of i minus k and then go and solve for i plus 1 and then operation 2 minus 1 what if i apply both operation 1 and operation 2 but in this case i am applying operation 1 first which means i am dividing first then if that divided value is more than equal to k then i will apply operation 2 so again this will be the value after dividing and then subtracting by k which means applying operation 1 then operation 2 and ultimately going and solving for next index by reducing both of them same way if i apply both operation of operation 2 but in this case operation 2 first which means nums of i should be more than equal to k if it is then get the subtracted value now divide this subtracted value but doing a seal division and ultimately going on to next index with the reduced operation operation to count and ultimately getting a corresponding answer and memoizing it time as you can simply see it is n into operation into operation 2 which is nothing but o of n cube in worst case and that will pass for us time is o of n cube and space is also o of n cube and that is your answer cool i hope you got it see you bye bye take care and let's win the next question bye bye